Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, held a press conference um, this week, and look at what happened. This is from journalist uh, Manu Raju. He said, Senator Chuck Schumer tells reporters at his on-camera presser that Democrats' position is $1.6 billion for wall funding, far less than the $5 billion Trump wants. But he won't say if Democrats are shutting the door uh, on anything more, saying he's not going to negotiate in public. So, this is, uh, I think, the second time, or is it the third time that he's like, okay, I'm going to give you your wall. <laughs> Other Democrats have said the same thing. The first thing this reminded me of is this. Take a look. Uh, Democrats folded on DACA. And, um, you know, they had the leverage. Uh, an overwhelming number of the American people support DACA. And when uh, a government shutdown was looming, they immediately caved. So, this is what they do. This is what they do. Um, then, uh, this is my favorite part of the story. So, whenever, when people saw that tweet about, oh, he just offered Trump the wall, but just a little less money for it, um, holy hell rained down on Schumer. And he, he knew it. He, he realized it, whether through Twitter or elsewhere. But he was like, oh my God, they hate me. What have I done? Uh, and then this happened. <laughs> Schumer's office says the $1.6 billion in funding Democrats want is for border security generally. Fencing. Not a concrete wall as Trump wants to spend $5 billion for. Uh, so this is the... Um, you would think they'd come up with a better dodge than that. Like, all right, guys, stop. Hey, listen, are you mad at me? Don't be mad. Don't be mad. It's not a wall. We're going to give him a fence. Pretty sure that's not what they're asking for. Pretty sure that the people who are mad at you just want you to say, we're not going to work with you on this issue because you're, you know, off the spectrum to the right. For those of you who don't know, Regardless of what your position is on borders, 75% um, of the American people say immigration generally is a positive thing. So that's a, a super large number. Um, and by the way, I did a poll on this on Twitter, and I thought the results were really interesting. I asked people, what do you prefer? I had no borders or open borders, and then underneath that, borders with liberal regulations, and then borders with conservative regulations, and then closed borders. And the winner by a mile and a half was borders with liberal regulations. So in other words, yeah, we could have a border. Countries have borders. That's just a thing that is what it is. But let's not be total assholes about who's allowed in and who's not allowed in. And let's have a process in place. And I listen, I totally agree with that position. I think the overwhelming majority of people are correct. But the thing that frustrates people, particularly about Schumer and these Democrats, is they don't fight on anything. Like, Schumer doesn't appear to believe in anything like he has no ideology he's just kind of like a vapid empty vessel and wherever the winds of washington dc are blowing he'll meet you halfway so for those of you who aren't familiar with his record i have perfect examples of this he voted to repeal glass steagall in 1999 that of course uh, helped contribute to the crash in 2008 the economic crash in 2008 he voted to bail out Wall Street in 2008. Why? Because I call him Wall Street Chucky. He takes a tremendous amount of money from Wall Street. He's a senator from New York. Uh, he also voted for the Patriot Act. He voted for the Iraq War. He voted against the Iran deal, man. Recently, when uh, Trump started bombing Assad, he uh, released a statement that was basically in favor of it. See, this is the problem with these Democrats, is that... <clears throat> It appears like the Republicans, they actually agree or disagree with them, and obviously I massively disagree with them. They have these things that they want to do, and they do them. <laughs> and then the Democrats, as opposed to saying, hey, you guys are wrong, here's my list of things I want to do, what they do is they say, all right, we'll meet you halfway on your things. Why, why don't you come out with your own agenda? with your own uh, policy ideas that you push on a regular basis. 
I mean, you can't get an interview with a Republican in mainstream media without them harping away on something that they're actively trying to do, whether it's build a wall or cut taxes for the rich or cut Social Security. They're always talking something they want to do. They're always hammering home. Whereas Schumer's like, well, I don't agree with this president, but I will offer $1.6 billion for wall, for wall funding. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? I don't agree with this other president, but I will offer to give him the ability to spy on all Americans and wage an illegal offensive war. By the way, am I allowed to do that voice? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's bordering on anti-Semitic or not, so I should probably reel it in and not do that voice anymore, but this is how Chuck Schumer strikes me. He strikes me as like, I believe in nothing, and I will meet you halfway on everything. And that's why they hate you. That's why they hate you. And by the way, why are... Why was he just like, it wasn't even a thing. It wasn't even a question. At least with Pelosi, we have a question. Like, oh, is she going to be the speaker? Now, ultimately, she is going to end up being the speaker, and that's going to be a day we're all sad about. But it's her or somebody to the right of her now, which is crazy. With Schumer, it wasn't even a question. They're just like, oh, okay, yep, you're now de you will continue to be Democratic leadership. Why? You've been an abysmal failure in every single way. And we're supposed to just be like, yeah, go ahead, Chuck. You lead the way, even though you don't believe in anything at all. You're vapid, and you meet the Republicans halfway on everything. It just, it's ridiculous. I mean, the Democrats had this giant wave and they immediately want to blow it on the same old, same old. That's what this is. You had this giant wave because there were bold left ideas that were being pushed and in a giant anti-Trump wave. And then the first thing you do is you go, Chuck Schumer, by the way, has a 26% approval rating. Let's go with the 26% approval rating guy to lead us in the Senate. And let's go with the 28% approval rating woman to lead us in the House. Well, you fucking geniuses. Well, how smart of you to fucking immediately blow your chances. And again, this is why we see that pendulum go back and forth. Everybody just kind of accepts that that's just how it is. Like, oh, we just have a pendulum. That's what it is. No, that's not just how it is. You can have a, a, a ruling, dominant, permanent majority if you had a party that actually represented the people. I always bring this up, but FDR got elected four times. The Republicans literally came up with term limits so that they could get his ass out of office because they felt like, oh, we can't actually beat social Democrats. Uh, they're too good and too popular, so we need to have term limits that force out these politicians. Now, of course, FDR died in office, but point is, after FDR, they were like, we don't want to have another permanent Democratic president, so let's have term limits so that eventually they have to leave office. I mean, today, the idea that like anybody would think, oh, we can have a permanent Democratic majority. Yes, we can, if they actually do the bidding of the people, but they don't. Because they're people like Chuck Schumer who are leading them.